Good evening and welcome to our Carols by Candlelight service here at Worthing Tabernacle. It's my pleasure to uh, be serving you this evening. My name's Steve, uh, I'm the assistant pastor here and I pray uh, that you will be blessed this evening. Don't rush off when the service is over. Please stay for mulled wine and mince pies. Um, there will be tea and coffee to, to serve yourselves over there with um, and the mulled wine will be brought to you. Uh, there'll be plenty of mince pies as well, so you might even be able to have one or two. Uh, so please do um, stay for a time of fellowship afterwards. There will be gluten-free stuff available as well, and that will be in the boxes uh, on the table. So please do um, help yourself to those. Now, before we start, let's come to God's Word, and then we're going we're gonna to go straight into singing our Christmas carols. Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. The nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising." Please join me as we sing our first carol, O Holy Night. Oh. 
Please do be seated. And we're going to be uh, having our Bible readings this evening. And our first one uh, this evening is from uh, Isaiah um, 9, verses 6 and 7. And it's going to be read by um, Bradley, one of our Fusion members. All our uh, readings this evening is from our our Fusion members. Um, And it's just following the Christmas story through the Scriptures. So um, Bradley's going to come up now and uh, read uh, God's Word. Yeah. For us to us for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord hosts will do this. Thank you very much. And now we're going to sing again, O come, O come, Emmanuel.
The next reading is from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 25. Now the birth of Christ Jesus took place in this way, when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph. Before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Amen. Thank you, James. We're going to sing uh, two songs back to back now. Thank you. Chapter 5, verse 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from old, from ancient days. Oh 
next reading is uh, by Brian and it's going to be from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 14 and in the same region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of, lo- of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. The angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that, you, that will be for all the people. For unto you is a born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Jesus Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel a multitude of the he- heavenly hosting praise, host praising God and saying, "Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among them, uh, among those who, whom He is pleased." Thank you. Now we're going to sing again, while shepherds watched, and heart the herald.
Our next reading comes from John, chapter 1, reading verses 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness, to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Heavenly Father, we ask and pray that at this Christmas time, as your word goes forth, as the name of Jesus is lifted high. Father, we pray and ask that people would find indeed rest for their souls. That, Lord, they would find relief from the burdens of life. That they would be comforted by your grace and love. Father, pour out your spirit, we pray, and help us to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Lord, to look to you for our next steps, for guidance. O oh Lord God, pour out your peace on earth, indeed we pray, at this difficult time. In Jesus' name, Amen.
Please do take your seats. And uh, just a, a huge thank you to everyone who has made uh, this evening possible. Um, it is just wonderful uh, to be here in this lovely setting. As I was um, preparing this message um, for tonight, I was thinking about Christmas, obviously. Um, and I was thinking about my many experiences over the years of the Christmas I've now, Christmases I've now lived through, and they're getting more and more. Um, but I remembered a moment when my oldest two kids uh, were much younger, and I was out shopping with them in the lead up to Christmas, uh, and knowing me, um, it was a... Uh, because I'd forgotten, uh, you know, last minute panic buying and uh, because I'd left it too late to get the presents. Um, and as I was in the queue, there were Christmas decorations all around, Christmas songs blaring over the radio. And I was, I think I was talking to the kids, winding them up, getting them super excited about Christmas. And this dear old lady uh, in front she turned around and started talking to me. And she looked down at the kids. She had a real beaming smile on her face. And she said, Christmas, it's all for the kids, isn't it? And I made some comment back to her about the kids and, and we went our separate ways and we both got lost in the hustle and bustle. And it's strange how you remember things like this many years later. And the more I thought about her comments and looking back at it, that dear lady had no hope in Christmas for herself. She was saying that Christmas was not for her. It was really for someone else, not her. But if she knew the truth behind Christmas, she would have known that Christmas is actually for everyone. If I'd have thought about it on the spot, I could have said so much more to her. I could have said, you're absolutely right. Christmas is for all the kids. Christmas is indeed for the little ones. But it is also for the big kids too. The true wonder of the Christmas story gives us all hope if we're willing to receive it. 
Christmas is indeed about the little ones receiving presents and being caught up in the festive fun. But there is something far greater that we must think about at Christmas. There really is something for everyone. It's not just for someone else. There is a gift given at Christmas for all. But will you accept it? In the passage that was read out in John 1, John wrote, The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. And to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. By John saying this statement, it it, it suggests that, that we are not all children of God naturally. Something has happened between God and his people and between God and the world. This suggests that the relationship or or union that there once was is not there anymore. And this is what I would like to explore a little bit this evening. Because the true wonder of wonders about the Christmas story is that God would come to save us and make us part of his family again. The hope of the true Christmas story isn't just for someone else. Now, I don't just believe in coincidence. I believe God has a plan. And I believe God is offering you a gift tonight. And the question you need to ask is, will you receive it? God teaches us in his word, that Jesus Christ, his son, is God's inexpressible gift to the world. And to have him and to know him, you must receive him as a gift. You cannot earn it. You cannot buy it. To understand the wonder of God's gift to us, we must understand what the Bible teaches us about ourselves. As we read the Bible, it reveals to us that God's people and the world around them had fallen so far into doing what was wrong, fallen so far into sin, that their deeds were evil and their heart was so corrupt. We learn through God's word that sin is basically our rebellion against a holy God. And the cry of man's heart is that he can be his own God and do as he pleases. But as we look around the world, we see that we have not learned from our mistakes. We are still falling into despair. Churchill was was quoted as saying, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. It doesn't seem like we're learning from our our mistakes in the past. And because of this ongoing rebellion against God, there is no hope for us to be reconciled to God because of our sinfulness. But the Bible draws our attention to to a faithful remnant. And God used these people to declare the wonder of his salvation plan for his people, which would also spread to the nations through his people. A salvation plan that was truly heavenly because it was out of this world. The God of heaven would indeed himself come down to save us. This promise of a salvation plan, it is peppered throughout the scriptures. And the passage in Isaiah 9 that was read out, it is probably one of the most famous. The reason being because it describes to us in such detail what God's salvation plan looks like. It says, for unto us a child is born, to us a son 
is given. We're looking for one like us. But there is something more to this man who is to come. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These names, they bring such glory with them. These are weighty things. And if there is any truth to them, these things need to be considered. This one that we're looking for will be Wonderful Counselor. He will talk like no other. His words will be like the sun with its rays that give life to all. This one will be mighty God. This one to come will be God himself. God with us. Emmanuel. This one will be everlasting father. This is how he is going to care for his own. He will show us the heart of the eternal Father. This man will be the Prince of Peace himself. He himself will be our peace. He is our salvation. God's salvation plan is a man, a God-man. And John declares this in his gospel. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father. Full of grace and truth. We've seen him in the flesh, John declares. This is what the gospel writers are testifying to. That the, the, the fact that they had met this God-man. They had heard his wise counsel. He spoke with authority like no other. They had seen his mercy and his grace in action. How he cared for the people and the world around him. Reaching out and touching the untouchables of society. They saw the Prince of Peace at work on his diplomatic mission from heaven to reconcile God and man. This is who the Christ was, the sent one from God. They had met the inexpressible gift sent from heaven by God. His son in the flesh. And they wanted to make him known to us. He is for all who would receive him. For all who would believe in him and trust in his holy name. This one was sent to us. And he was spotless. He was a man without sin. No word spoken, ever spoken, out of place. No action questionable. Yes, they were amazed and shocked and even in fear at times at what he said and did, but they could never find fault with this man. Even Pontius Pilate said before Jesus' crucifixion, I find no fault in this man. Many tried, but they never could. He was perfect. No, no, not showing arrogance, but, but the complete opposite. Even though he was the Son of God, he showed humility. He was the servant king, showing his people what it would look like for someone to live out the law of God. I, I implore you, look to Jesus. Find out about him. Look to the law of God. You know, the, the Ten Commandments will be enough for now. Many of us will, will know what they are or, or heard of some of them along the way. And they are, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall make no idols. You shall not make, take the name of the Lord your God in vain. 
Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honour your father and mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbour. You shall not covet. As you gaze upon Christ, you will see that he fulfilled the law of God and people ran to him. They couldn't stay away from him because he was the giver of life. To live out God's word it is not to bring death but life. And that is what Christ did wherever he went. He, his disciples declared about him, you have the words of eternal life. There is no one else to follow. Kids wanted to run to him and be near him. The crowds would follow him. He was perfect. He was faultless. Now, if we take the same law of God with humble and honest hearts and compare ourselves to it, we would soon find out that we all fall far short of the glory of God. See, the law of God exposes our sin. And it reveals to us our sinful nature. It unearths how we are in complete rebellion against God, but not Christ. He is, as the scriptures declare, the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. The Bible describes God's word as being more precious than gold and sweeter than honey. And Jesus reveals to us the worth of God's word when it is lived out. He is the light of God shining in our darkness. Will you come and behold him? When you look at Christ and his life, you see how good God is. All you see as you gaze upon him is that he is the one and only true source of life. Through him and God's word, we find true forgiveness. We find true peace and restoration and wholesomeness. He is an example in the flesh of what it means to be truly good. And Christ goes on to show the magnitude of his love and goodness. He shows the greatness of his power. Because as the angel testified in Joseph, Matthew 1, Joseph, Son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Our sin, our rebellion, it must be dealt with. God, God says that we will have to give an account for every word and deed we've ever done. And those things cannot just be brushed under the carpet. No deed or, or word in all of history will ever be forgotten. We can trust that God sees all, knows all, and will judge all. And we cannot deal with our sin because we are sinful. No one can pay the price of our sin because we are all guilty of punishment. How can I pay for your sin when I'm guilty 
already for my own sin. You cannot pay for my sin because you haven't paid the debt for your sin. We cannot save ourselves. This is the truth. That's why the angel declared to the shepherds, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. Jesus is the Saviour. Come for his people to save them from their sins. And he shows his love for us by becoming one of us. To all who believe in him, he gives the right to become children of God. How is this even possible? Because as Christ takes on our humanity in his birth, in the incarnation, he becomes our representative. He is perfect, tempted as we are, yet without sin. And this Christ, that is Messiah King, he faces death just like we do. So now we have a perfect representative under the same curse as we are. Death and eternal separation from God are the punishment for our sin and rebellion. But in order to save us from that eternal death and separation from God, Christ took on our humanity so that the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit working together could save us from our sin. The Son in the flesh becoming a curse for us. He willingly and lovingly gave his life for us to redeem us. The Father gave his Son as a gift to save us. Christ is the inexpressible gift of God. I pray you can begin to fathom the depths of God's love for the world. For all who would confess faith in Christ, who would receive him, God gives the right to become children of God through his Son. God makes us alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses, by cancelling the record of our debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. The cross is where Christ faced the death and punishment from God that we deserved as our representative in the flesh, as one of us. This is the true wonder of Christmas. God come down to save us. The true hope and joy of Christmas isn't just for someone else. God's offer of reconciliation, of peace and forgiveness is held out to you this Christmas through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Will you receive God's inexpressible gift or will you reject him? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your inexpressible gift. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your willingness. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your love and kindness. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you poured out your life willingly to save us. 
We ask and pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts, to reveal your truth to us more and more, that we would see the true wonder of Christmas and help us to have open hearts and receive Christ as Lord and Saviour. In his name we pray. Amen. so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him amen please do stay for refreshments uh, mold wine will be brought to you uh, tea and coffee you can serve yourself over there and mince pies will be dotted around so please uh, there's plenty to go around so don't fight over them thank you <laughs>